Good morning. Hello? I'm, yep. <laughs> Sorry, Elaine, I'll just do a quick intro oh. here. Hello, I'm Kobe Kushner. I'm an analyst here at Red Cloud Securities. Uh, big thanks to Weirfolds LLP for sponsoring this session. Our next presenter is Oh My Gold Mines. This is a gold developer that's advancing one of South America's largest past producing gold mines located in Guyana. Uh, Elaine and Greg, you have about 15 minutes, which will follow with uh, five minutes of Q&A. Viewers, feel free to ask your questions at any time. Thanks, Kobe. Yeah, I'm Elaine Ellingham, CEO of Oh My Gold. Uh, our asset is, as Kobe mentioned, the past producing Oh My Gold mine in Guyana. So we are very focused on rapidly growing our resources uh, through sound exploration on what is a very gold rich uh, brownfields project. So we went public. Uh, just 15 months ago, and in 10 months of drilling last year, we were able to get ourselves to our first 43-101 main resource estimate of 1.6 million ounces. So we believe that's just the beginning, and uh, I'll get on with it here. Second. Oh, there. Uh, so I will be making some forward-looking statements, and as well, we will be making some mention of a historic resource, uh, so please note the cautionary language. So the Omai gold mine was in production from 1993 to 2005, and it produced almost 3.8 million ounces. A fairly large operation, it averaged over 300,000 ounces per year, um, and so we were very fortunate to inherit a, a very large and extensive uh, database of uh, information from all the historic work. And there are two past producing pits, the Winot and the Fennel, which we'll talk about. But basically there was some mineralization. It was known to extend below both pits with the Fennel having a historic resource already drilled below it. So uh, the property is very well located. It's 165 kilometers south of the capital city of Georgetown. Uh, we have a, a one kilometer airstrip, so you can get there in 40 minutes or you can drive the road, which takes uh, typically about four hours. So the project was uh, relinquished to the government in 2007, so it was fully remediated at that time. So we are fully indemnified against any of the historical mining activities. So Guyana has become a very hot region uh, for exploration. Uh, many of you have probably heard about projects there. It's a bit of a destination right now. There were some recent acquisitions uh, at, at good premiums to market. And Majors, uh, Barrick in particular, has, has started to get in there in a big way. So operating there, uh, I found it a, to be a great jurisdiction. It's the former British Guyana. So there is a, a legacy of British law and business practices there. And we, the Omai mine is a very, was a very uh, famous asset when it was in operation. It employed almost 1,000 people in a country with a population of about 700,000 people. So can, as you can imagine, it was a well-known asset. It, it, the job creation uh, was such that the government is, is very enthusiastic about seeing it come back into production. So with respect to OMI, as I mentioned, we've been public for about 15 months. Uh, for me, there were some major milestones. Uh, Renault Adams joined the board as the chairman uh, in late 2020, just after going public. Uh, I joined the board in March and, and came in as the interim CEO last July and permanent CEO uh, in October. So Renault and I worked before together uh, at I Am Gold and then also at Richmond Mines where we had a, a, a discovery there that uh, ended up being very successful and taken over three years later. So at, at uh, OMI, we are very proud of the fact that we fast-tracked ourselves in nine months of drilling in our first year as a public company uh, to a 1.6 million ounce resource. And we'll talk a bit about that. So for me, we put together a team of, of, of really good, solid geologists. Uh, after I joined the company, I brought in John Sperney, who's the best geologist I know, and, and he brought in some people he'd worked with before. And when you have a good project, it's actually easy to attract some solid talent. <clears throat> so this is just an aerial view of the property. Uh, the round uh, Fennel deposit produced 2.4 million ounces. It's a quartz diorite stock or plug, um, often referred to as the OMI stock. And then the Winot deposit, it produced 1.4 million ounces, and it's a long uh, linear shear corridor. And you can see our airstrip in the distance. Um, so uh, 
continuing on here. So, so basically, timing is really important when you're bringing when you're in the mining industry. And you can see that uh, the Omai mine operated between 1993 and 2005, when the gold price was in fact under uh, $400 an ounce for most of that period of time. Uh, kind of a tough go. So as you can imagine, they weren't doing a lot of investment in the expansion or in pursuing their exploration targets. So that's in particular worked in our favor. So the Guyana Shield, again, a lot of people operating there. And, and uh, it has a, a greenstone belt, uh, which as we know from Canadian deposits and West African deposits, the greenstone belts are, are very uh, rich and prolific for orogenic gold deposits, which uh, tend to be large and have very deep uh, roots and deep depth potential. So the Guyana Shield extends uh, into Venezuela, uh, Guyana, into Suriname and French Guiana. And in Suriname, the Rosabel mine is quite substantial of over 13 million ounces. Uh, Las Cristinas over in the Venezuela side, 17 million ounces. So this, this is great hunting turf. And uh, recent acquisitions, Guyana Goldfields was acquired by Zijin at a, a quite a premium to market a couple of years ago. And more recently, Gold X was acquired by Grand Columbia. So 2021, we basically got uh, focused right down immediately at drilling under the former Winot pit. So up at the top left, you got a longitudinal section there. And, and that within that light blue area produced about 1.4 million ounces. So basically what we did is we started drilling uh, 100 to 225 meters below that past producing pit. And note, that's actually 1.7 kilometers long. So we put 16, we completed 16 holes there. Um, all of the red indicates uh, greater than 10 gram meters per ton. So you can see it has some uh, very good grades in it. Uh, we were also able to uh, integrate some of the historical uh, data of holes that would have extended below the bottom of the pit. So in a fairly short timeline, you know, we were able to demonstrate that the shear actually extends at least 2.4 kilometers. And, uh, as you can see from some of the intervals, uh, there are some very impressive grades in this deposit. We, were, we hit like nine grams over 16 meters, you know, 4.6 grams over 20 meters. And on the bottom right, you can see what the cross section of this deposit looks like. And there is this very, very broad uh, 150 to 300 meter wide uh, shear corridor. And within that, there's numerous shears that were intruded by dikes, subsequently fractured, and then the gold fluids uh, precipitated in those. So uh, we were being fairly bold. You can see in this section, we would have stepped down 200, 250 meters, still hitting the zone. So this just gives you an idea of, our, of the deposit we outlined. I note that uh, this other thing here, this is the Fennel pit. And remember, there is a historic resource under that. But uh, basically, uh, this shows the multiple mineralized shears. And you can also see quite clearly from this that um, there are gaps where we haven't yet drilled. So there's expansion potential here. There's a few areas that were a little more difficult to get the drill uh, to access. And we, we were on sort of a trajectory of trying to get to the resource. So we do know that there's expansion potential uh, on this. So basically we, uh, we used p and &E Consulting as our independent QP. They used a 0.35 gram per ton cutoff. And um, we, you'll see on the bottom right are indicated and inferred resources, uh, which are about 1.6 million ounces at 1.4 grams per ton. I'd also note that um, if we up that cutoff to 0.75 grams per ton, we don't lose that many ounces. It comes down to about 1.4 million ounces, but at a 1.85 gram per ton grade. So in other words, it's got a very robust uh, grade profile to it. And you'll see there that the, our resource, although we only did the 16 holes, we actually were able to integrate over 10,000 assays from 546 drill holes uh, that would have um, drilled in and around the historic pit. So here we're looking just at a cross section of, so you can get a sense of Winot and Fennel. And I, I think the one thing you should notice that they're really only 400 meters apart. So th these are in close proximity, very different types of deposit. One's this shear corridor, and this other one is this, uh, is this quartz diorite stock. But you can see the deposit that we outlined here 
the Winot was historically drilled to a maximum depth of 200 meters, so we've defined it down to 400 meters, and we know that it does continue to depth. Uh, on the Winnell deposit here, this is where 2.4 million ounces of gold were uh, was extracted. And there, the, the pit bottomed in a, in a, a diabase uh, sill that was barren, but drilling subsequently uh, below when the mine ceased operations and I am gold had taken over the company, they did do 46 drill holes at depth and identified it what is now a historic resource, but for another 1.4 million ounces. And I think the takeaway is, is that, you know, if you look at what was produced here, and including the, our, our new resource and historic resource, you're looking at 7 million ounces. So this is, this is a very gold rich property. So we have started to model Fennel and basically you see the upper part, uh, they're very flat line zones, the 46 holes that were done by IM Gold in 2007 down below uh, identified 13 sub horizontal layers. And on the left uh, of the slide, you can see, <clears throat> The, this is about 1.5 million ounces at about 2.5 uh, grams per ton, uh, assuming you cap it at a 15 grams per ton. Uncapped, it's even a larger uh, resource there. So basically for us, we're gonna have to uh, drill uh, four to five holes to, ver to bring this into 43101 compliance, but we'd also like to extend those holes to look at the depth potential of this, of this deposit. So for me, what's also important, you know, you look here and you can see the here's the Fennel uh, historic resource at depth, uh, the Winot resource, the 1.6 million ounces we've just worked on. Um, but you can see that there is extension potential on the east. There are splays off that we already know about. And we know that the shear continues off for at least another kilometer to the west. So there are a lot of exploration targets, as I alluded to initially, that have been, uh, that were untested. And so we are uh, aggressively pursuing those. We started trenching, which is extremely effective. There is a laterite and saprolite cover. We started trenching in January, and it's very good for actually exposing uh, the underlying uh, saprolite and fresh rock. So we've sampled that. We started drilling last week on some of our best targets. So Broccoli Hill is one target that is of particular interest. Uh, it, it's again in, in near proximity to both Fennel and Renat. And it's a target that's about 750 meters across, 500 meters north south. And you can see in the top right in here that there are a lot of historic uh, uh, workings. These are all old workings on the hill in the yellow dots. Uh, you can see large geochem anomalies uh, with, the, with gold. Some auger samples, there's one that ran 12.4 grams per ton. We've done some trenching in this area and we're able to uh, uh, track a, a shear hosted zone that was running up to 29 grams per ton. So we know that there is a gold source somewhere here. Uh, we did six initial drill holes, mostly just to get a sense of, of the bedrock. And we actually intersected gold on four of those six holes, which was, uh, which was tremendous. So we are trenching there now and expect to start drilling within, within the next month. Uh, Blueberry Hill is where we're currently trenching, or we're currently drilling, sorry, but trenching uh, has been uh, very successful in identifying uh, actually diorite, some uh, quartz vein systems, and, and with sampling, we took 60 samples out of uh, almost 400 meters of trenching up on Blueberry Hill, and half of those samples ran over a gram per ton, So and, and seven of them ran over five grams per ton. So uh, trenching is very effective. We are drilling currently in this area. And you can kind of see in the aeromagnetics why we're there. Uh, Fennel here was a mag low, and Blueberry Hill has a very prominent mag low and the trend between them. So uh, we believe this is a very prospective area. And also, um, once we started trenching, we got, got down a couple meters. And on the bottom left there, you can see we found an old adit just from some small scale mining. So clearly they were pursuing some gold mineralization. So our strategy is pretty clear. Uh, building resources, we've got a real leg up. Uh, the, the historic uh, resource under the Fennel, uh, we need to uh, move that forward into 43101 compliance. But uh, the new 1.6 million ounce uh, resource at Winot that we believe is expandable, is a great contributor. And then I also uh, 
believe very strongly that we've got some some excellent exploration targets that uh, could very much very very well lead to some uh, near surface open pit resources as well. And those between those those should all drive the uh, mine plan over the next while. Running out of time here, Kobe. I'll take all the time you need. You know, you got okay. another five minutes. Okay. Uh, no, great. So just our capital structure. We're on the venture exchange. We're currently pursuing a listing on the OTC. Um, we have uh, 271 million shares outstanding, a market cap right now of about 29 million. We have a, a fairly diverse shareholder base. We have uh, Silver Corp in it uh, just under 13%. Sandstorm's in there at 7.5%. We do have uh, already an instant in an uh, European and uh, Asian uh, in investor uh, contribution in there as well. So about a thousand shareholders. Uh, just looking at peers, we're we're uh, basically a, a very good valuation at twelve to twenty dollars an ounce for looking at our resources. And uh, we just believe we have the key elements, a great property, and the key elements in place to move this project forward. Okay, I think we'll leave it there. All right. Yeah, thanks for that uh, presentation, Elaine. And uh, yeah, we'll now start with the Q&A portion. So, you know, are you guys currently looking for a strategic partner to help advance this? Um, well, currently we did a financing in December, so I think we're we're adequately funded to get us through the next, uh, well, the trenching and the next uh, 5,000 meters of drilling. Um, I guess, uh, you know, we are hoping to add quite a bit of value with this next phase of work and where we go from there, I think is, uh, is open, but uh, yeah, we have a lot of targets. Uh, so we will need to finance to, to drive this forward. Okay. And, and we have a question here. They're, they're wondering about uh, the resource. So it's in indicated and inferred categories. Um, you know, with this next program, are you guys planning to upgrade any of that to measured? Uh, no, because I think uh, there's enough expansion potential that we want to build the resources and get a handle for the, uh, you know, exactly how large uh, this project can be. Um, as I said, there's, we already know just within the scope of that, we're not uh, Fennell sphere, there's 7 million ounces. So, you know, I believe that, you know, we can rebuild this into quite a substantial project. Um, I don't, I think it's a bit premature to, you um, basically waste our drilling on increase, uh, bringing it into the measured when we could maybe just at, expand. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I agree. I think that makes sense. Um, is Blueberry Hill an oh my stock type target or is it more structurally controlled like Winnow? Uh, we believe it's, it's more like Fennell. It's up in that area and we've already identified uh, flat line zones similar to Fennell plus some, some of the diorite. So, uh, we'd like to see another Fennell. Okay. And, you know, looking at Winnow, well, you know, you guys showed that this thing's wide open. There's different ways that you could grow it. Um, you know, so what is the best way of growing this thing? Is your next program going to be more so focused on drilling along strike or are you guys more so targeting depth potential? Well, I think, uh, you know, assuming that it would be moving forward as a, a, an open pit, a layback on the existing pit, uh, I think it makes good sense to step up, uh, step a long strike, because of course, uh, the deeper you go, the higher the strip ratio. And if we know that there's extensions of long strike where, where it's never been mined, then it'll keep the strip ratio low. Okay, and very quickly here, circling back to the grade profile, you mentioned how it's quite robust. Upping the cutoff grade doesn't impact the resource too much. Uh, what's the distribution like? Is there a higher grade core or is it pretty consistent? Uh, it's it's fairly consistent. It uh, it 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 does not. We, we actually have a, a a nice model of the grades. Uh, it there's probably some plunges and some through through the through the deposit, but there's no indication that the grade decreases at depth. Okay, and with that, we are out of time. But uh, you know, thank you to you, Elaine, and thank you, all my gold mines. Uh, next up, we do have Orion Resource presenting on stream one, so I'll direct everyone there. Um, thanks for that presentation, Elaine. Okay, thank you.